Hi again. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is video feedback. And um, again, using Hydra Editor, and we're going to talk about how this effect um, can be useful in the context of live video. Um, and so we're going to look at this, this sketch that I'm showing here right now and, and things that you can make similar, similar to this. Um, so this is the code if you want to just copy it. <laughs> um, so what is video feedback? Um, I'm going to switch to a simpler camera view for a second. So um, what is video feedback? Um, in this context, what I'm talking about when I say video feedback is basically when the output of something becomes the input to that same thing. So in this case, uh, what the camera is seeing or the screen that is showing what the camera is seeing becomes the input to that camera. So more um, concretely, basically, if I have a camera and point it at the screen, I can create a sort of feedback loop. Um, and uh, feedback operates at a lot of different levels within Hydra. It's something um, you can use by using an external webcam, but it's also something that you can create within the code itself, which are sort of um, the, the output buffer becomes the input buffer. And um, this generates this sort of chaotic system um, where sometimes it's, it's hard to know exactly what will happen. And I think that to me within the world of computers and programming can be exciting. Um, to have creative control over some aspects and to have less creative control over other aspects and sort of um, see what happens. So um, to start, I'm going to um, take this webcam that I'm using here and use it to demonstrate a feedback loop. Um, so the image might be a little shaky for a sec, but... Um, here I have the camera and um, I'm going to point it back at the screen. So now you can see this is my desktop. I have this window with the browser open. I have some, I don't know, some documents open over there. You can see my toolbar. Um, and, and it already creates this um, effect, sort of like an infinite mirror. Um, like when you have two mirrors where one mirror is reflecting the other mirror and that um, creates this sort of um, infinite tunnel. So uh, if I play around with the camera, it starts to kind of create some different effects on the screen. So here I'm rotating the camera. And just that uh, kind of the toolbar of my desktop is creating this whole, um, this whole visual. And so what's happening here? Well, the camera is seeing what's on the screen. Um, and then what the camera is seeing becomes what's on the screen. Um, and so, and then the camera is seeing what's on the screen. And then what the camera is seeing is shown on the screen. And so the tiny transformations that happen in each step, so in this case, sort of a rotate, each tiny transformation then influences what happens within this infinite tunnel. Um, so here, I'm getting a little closer. Um, and so in Hydra, we can also, uh, I'm going to try to hold this still if I can here. Um, in Hydra, we can also kind of add um, slight transformation. So right now I'm manually rotating the camera. But uh, we could also do some of these things using Hydra. So um, one, one thing I could do is the command invert, which switches black to white and white to black. It switches the colors in the image. So I'm going to do that and press out. And then 
you get this sort of like striped striped thing and it's it's hard to hold still because subtle movements start to influence everything um just and sometimes the closer you can hold the the camera to exactly face the screen and the border of the screen fits the borders of the camera then sometimes you get some nice effects so. And so here I'm, um, and if you actually have a stand for your camera, this can help a lot um, in terms of getting some of these more subtle effects. And so something else we can do, we can play a little more with the colors here. So um, here I could say, um, I'm typing with one hand now because I'm holding the camera. Um, here I could say invert uh, two colors and don't invert um, one of the other colors. And so we start to get the color. We could add different color combinations here. Let's see. And so if you have a, an external webcam, go ahead and play around with um, these kinds of things because you can get so many different types of effects just just by having a, a webcam and adding kind of small transformations um, and then if if you have something between the camera and the screen you can also start to get this sort of echo effects Video feedback is, um, has been around, you know, probably since the first video camera ever existed. Um, and I want to point out um, this resource from the 80s that's a, a video called Space Time Dynamics in Video Feedback. Um, and it, it was made in 1980 by someone named uh, Jim Crutchfield. Um, and Jim C Crutchfield was a a physicist and he was sort of fascinated by this infinite tunnel um, phenomena, phenomena. And, and here we can see his analog video synthesizer um, similar to the one we were looking at earlier um, in the, the first video and, and so what he's doing here is he's um, taking a video camera um, in his studio and pointing it at the screen that is the output of the video, um, very similar to what we were just doing. Um, and, and you can see as he, get clo he gets closer, he gets sort of a, um, starts to get an infinite loop, very similar to what we were just looking at. Um, but when, with, he has a stand and kind of studied this scientifically and, and what, he studied was how this exact process of, of creating an infinite tunnel um, can also be used for a lot of complex math, mathematical simulations. Um, for example, fractals or um, fluid dynamics. And, and often these things in math are sort of considered advanced math topics. Um, but uh, I think also this way of exploring them, it's also um, kind of an intuitive way of thinking of these things as, as part of this infinite tunnel effect and, 
and thinking being able to use a tool like Hydra or a camera and a screen uh, to explore these these phenomena where um, because it's such a kind of unstable system each time you do it you might get a slightly different result um, so I really recommend uh, checking out this video there's a lot of, of interesting things here um, and also um, he wrote a paper explaining the exact um, mathematical equations that go into all of this. Um, so going back to Hydra, um, again, the sort of most straightforward way of experimenting with feedback is just to have a webcam. Um, but there's also ways within Hydra that you can um, start to use feedback just inside of the actual graphics system. Um, and so we learned uh, in the last video that um, you have these sort of sources and outputs. The sources are S0 and the outputs are O0. Um, and so one thing that we could do here is say, so right now we have the output O0. Again, when a parenthesis is empty, it's the same as if it was being sent to output O0. So we have this output O0 um, right now. And so what happens if we use O0 is also a source? Um, so see if you can, before I actually run this code, see if you can imagine what might happen. So here I'm taking the output and it's becoming the input and then it has this color. Um, and maybe I'm actually going to get rid of the color for now just to keep this simpler. So let's go back to um, here we have the camera. And so what happens if we make the output become the input? So it ends up being sort of like a, a still image. So basically what's happening is the output becomes the input, that becomes the output, that becomes the input, but uh, nothing is changing anymore, whereas when we're using the camera as a source, which is S0, um, now uh, it's just sending S0 to the out, which is O0. So one thing we could do is we could make the output the input, um, like this, but then we could actually blend it a little with the camera each time. So. I'm just gonna, I'm having a static image, but I'm just sort of um, changing the camera a little bit each time, or adding the camera image a little bit. And so it, we can get these sort of trails. Um, or if I uh, um, blend it even less, it ends up creating this very ghost, ghost-like effect. So another thing we could look at, what if we just um, scroll a little bit? So we could scroll. Um, it ends up, oh, let's see. And then what if we scale everything down? So the scaling is making smaller. So then the entire thing just kind of starts to shrink towards the middle. And then if we uh, make it bigger again, then taking the same, it's taking the sort of same output, what's on the screen, and then it's just starting to apply these different um, transformations to it each time the screen updates. Um, and I want th this, what we're seeing right now is only working because we started with a camera image. So if I were to just um, like copy this, clear everything and, and run it again, um, we, we wouldn't see anything. And that's because um, we didn't start with the step of starting with the camera. So. Um, here, if I start with the camera, 
Oh, oh, zero. So here we have the camera, and now um, I I I want to also mention there. I just ran one line of code. So what I did was Control Enter, and you can see that only this line of code flashes. Um, and so at the beginning, I mentioned that you can run code using the um, play button, or you can run it by doing Control Shift Enter, which does everything on the screen like this. Um, but if I want to sort of switch between two different things, I can just do one line at a time. So if I click here, control enter, um, I'm running this line of code. If I click here and do control enter, I'm running this line of code. Um, and so just using feedback here, I'm creating this, um, this sort of, um, I have this texture that I can keep morphing um, and I could, you know, start to change it more and then go back out. And, and this, uh, if you're doing live visuals, this, this can be really um, exciting, but I, and it also has a lot of uses, I think, with just um, camera, filtering a camera output. Um, so let me go back again to the camera. Um, I'll go one more time here. Um, we could also use a modulate function here, for example. Um, so again, modulate, what it's doing is it's using the colors of one thing to affect um, the coordinates of another. And so if we use this within feedback, it's basic, and um, if I use this same texture, O0, so I'm using this texture just to modulate itself, what it will do is each time it updates um, based on the color um, of a pixel, it will move that pixel in a certain direction. So I'm just going to do it very slightly here. So um, you start to see some more effects up here. Um, so what if I'll go back and try again, start again, and we get this sort of effect. What if one thing we could do is um, saturate a little each time, which can make, um, we'll start again, and then we're gonna, and then, so. Um, again, what we're doing here, we are uh, starting with the output. So the output texture becomes the input. Um, we're scrolling it a little in this case. We could try scrolling the other way just to see what happens. We're scrolling it a little in this case. Um, and then we um, are making it a bit bigger. And then we're modulating it. So basically using the colors of one, um, the colors of the output texture to affect the um, the uh, coordinates of that texture. Um, and I think this is just kind of an interesting texture just by itself that keeps feeding back into itself. Um, if, if you want to see it without the code, you can do control shift H, oops, control shift H, um, and that will make the code go away. Um, and then I will add the code again. Maybe I want to add the camera again. And then ooh, that, that looks nice. So um, another thing we could also um, start to create a sort of more liquid or fluid like texture also using feedback and the blending that I was showing earlier. So. Um, Another handy trick I want to mention is that if you want to automatically format your code, if you do Control Shift F, it will um, sort of put it all in its own line like this. Um, um, so going back here, now I will, um, I'm going to show a sort of more liquid effect. So I'm going to go back to blending a little bit of the camera on each input. So here we see the camera 
Maybe I'll do even less. Oh, maybe a little more, let's see, so we can just lightly see it. Um, yes. And so just by tweaking these parameters a little bit, I get a really different effect here. Um, what, what, what's happening here is it's similar to this um, trail effect that I was showing earlier. Um, so here we have the, um, the, each time it's taking the output, it's adding the camera slightly on top of the output and then it's sending that to the output. And so we get this sort of um, light trail here. Um, what we could do is if we add a modulation step in there, um, it will also, it's also going to move the pixels just slightly based on the color um, of that pixel. Um, and so we get this sort of organic feeling thing. Um, another thing we could do here, maybe we could um, try changing the contrast each, each step. Um, oops, there you And so then sorts of things. If I wanted to modulate the other direction, I could put a negative here. Um, we could add a little bit more saturation. Um, and yeah, these effects, honestly, every time you do them, they will look a little bit different. Um, and, and I think that's the beauty of being able to just play with these things is that you could try lots and lots of different things. Um, I want to show another thing that you could do with feedback. So I'm going to clear this and let's start with a shape in this case so here we just have a shape um, and uh, what we could do is here make the uh, output the input again so i'm going to say source is o0 and then um, I'm going to add the shape onto it. So it's still it's taking the triangle and then it's adding a triangle on top. So we don't really see any difference um, basically because um, it's taking a triangle, adding a triangle in the exact same place, sending that to the output. Um, the output becomes the input. It's adding a triangle. Um, and so we just see a triangle. However, what if we start to transform this just a little bit? So one thing I could do is say uh, repeat here. Um, and then let's see what happens. Oop. And maybe I need to bring the brightness down a little bit. Let's see. Uh, maybe I'll do bl a blend the shape. Um, and so here we get this sort of fractal effect um, where basically uh, the triangle is repeated and repeated again and repeated again. Um, I'm actually going to do this the other way around because I think you could see it a little better. So let's start with the shape and then I'm going to blend the output into the shape. So and just blend it a little bit and out. Oh, and I forgot to do the repeat step here. So again, here it's just a 
Triangle, blending with a triangle, blending with a triangle again. There we go. That's what I wanted to happen. Um, <laughs> so here we're starting with the triangle, um, adding the output or what we see on the screen and then repeating the whole thing. So uh, then the next time when we have a shape and we're adding the output, it's adding a repeated triangle to what was just a triangle before. Um, and it turns out that this uh, way of constructing things is very similar to a fractal. A fractal is something that repeats, um, uh, sort of repeats itself the same at each scale. Um, and so when just using feedback in this sort of infinite tunnel concept, we end up getting um, this fractal, um, generating a fractal on the screen. Um, and we could kind of start to add more things to the shape. So for example, I could modulate it with an oscillator to kind of warp the edges and start to get this. We could just repeat twice instead of, um, we could add a color. Um, and so you'll notice that uh, in this part, I can um, change lots of things about the triangle. Um, and you'll notice that things have a really different effect if I put them up here versus if I put them down here. Um, and that's because the things that I'm adding to the shape up here, um, they're just, being applied to the triangle, whereas what's happening down here is being applied to the entire repeated texture. Um, and so what ends up happening is that there's um, a lot more, uh, a lot, um, just a lot more effect of what, what's happening. Um, and so this this is useful both in kind of generating interesting images and also in uh, creating visual effects to apply to videos or filters. Um, and I wanted to show, for example, this same effect. So um, let's see what happens if we use a camera here instead of a shape. And, so I'm going to do source S0. Um, here it's hard to see what's going on. I'm going to take. Um, we get kind of, it's kind of hard to see what's happening, huh? But there I can see my face um, repeating infinitely. Um, and maybe, maybe it could be nice if I add a little contrast here. Oh, it doesn't do very much, let's see. Um, so repeating is making it a lot smaller each time, but we could just make it kind of a little bit smaller each time. Let's see. And so then it creates this tunnel. Um, so it's taking the entire thing um, and it's doing a difference with the camera and then it's making the entire thing smaller and then starting that process all over again so it creates the same um, infinite tunnel thing. And so this would be a good time to just sort of experiment with all of these things. Before I end this section, I wanted to show one other thing, which is how you can share things that you've made and also uh, see things that other people have made. Um, and so uh, we have these buttons up here and we've gone through, I think all of them now, but there's one missing, which is this um, 
this upload to gallery button. And so if you click on that button, um, you can um, include your name or um, anything you want there or a Twitter handle. These get shared to a Twitter account directly from the editor. So that should have uploaded this to Twitter. Um, and so what happens after I share this is now it shows up in this Twitter account, um, Hydra Patterns. Um, and so be careful because anything that you click here, it will share a screenshot to this public um, Twitter account. Um, and what happens is you can actually go through and see things that other people have made. Um, and then um, if you find something that you like, what you could do is actually click on the link that is um, above it. And so here I'm clicking on this one. Um, and it's taking a little while to load. But so now it loaded this sketch. And so, um, and it directly opens the the editor with that sketch in it. And so what I can do is say, oh, I like this sketch, but I wanna try, you know, I wanna try a slightly different, um, um, doing a slightly different thing with it. So um, could, you know, change the colors or change some of the shapes. Um, and then what I can do now is um, I can re-upload this to the gallery and um, within the Hydra community, there's sort of this convention of putting your name or adding little notes in the code. Um, so, so I'm gonna say modified by Olivia and then I'm gonna upload this again. Um, collab. Um, and so we'll see, it should have now uploaded to the gallery. Um, here we go. So now it shows the sketch that I've just made and it's also, um, it also shows the sketch that I used in order to create that sketch. Um, and this, this is something that's been, um, kind of important to me because I think you know, I, I made this tool about two years ago, but I still feel like I'm sort of an intermediate user of it. And I feel like I actually learned so much from seeing what other people do. Um, and I think sometimes there's this idea of uh, the coder, the, the, the coder as this like genius who was born being able to I don't know, speak and dream in code or something. And rather that code is a community of people who make things and then make things that, that each of them can use, that other people can use and kind of share that knowledge with other people. Um, and so one thing that's really important to me with this is making it easier for people to share things with each other and kind of acknowledging that everything that we make using a computer, unless we've built a computer completely from scratch, everything that we make is sort of a, is building on all of these things that other people have made. Um, and so in that spirit, I really hope that, you know, if you're watching this video, you upload something and consider sharing it with the other people. So thank you.